Our lesson study this morning um, presented by Jennifer was a wonderful introduction to the, the testimony that Daryl Barrett will be bringing us today. The title of the lesson this week was Waiting in the Crucible. Most of us here know Daryl. Most of you who didn't know him here have probably heard about at least his daughter on the news. And I just hope that not everybody has to go through the type of crucible that, that they went through. But I just want to welcome Daryl Barrett. Boy, that's uh, bright lights. Uh, hey, it's uh, good to be home. This is my my home church. You know, Sam Point's my home now, but Moe's Lake Church will always be my home. And I see there's a lot of new faces out there, so you're going to find out who I am through my testimony here. I'm going to do a short one. And Hey, I've been through it. I've been through the fire. But hey, I've came out the other side, and I am good. And that's what I'm here to tell you about and tell you how to, how to be that way. So uh, let's uh, start off with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, I want to thank you for what you have done for me, what you are willing to do for each and every one of us here. Thank you that you have called us to meet together this Sabbath. Thank you for your love, your care, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, which there is no greater gift other than Christ's sacrifice that we have to save us. Thank you so much, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, for all you, uh, all you old people here, not necessarily old, but old Moses Lake members, Lyle Albrecht says to say hi. Talked to Lyle yesterday and he said, make sure you tell all my friends in Moses Lake hi. So I'm doing that. Last night as I was uh, going through some stuff, I ran across this uh, verse at Psalms 50, 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. I called upon God in my day of trouble, and hopefully the day I can glorify him. You know, I'm basically a hometown boy. I grew up in Morden, just down the road, and, uh, Oh, you know, I had some had some religious training growing up, but uh, you know, I never. You know, it's not the real thing out there. The the rest of the world doesn't have the truth that the Adventist Church has, and I thought believing in God was made you a Christian. I had no idea what being a Christian was, but thanks to this church, they put up a tower down on Saddle Mountain. Start broadcasting 3ABN. We tuned that in and started watching Doug Batchelor. And uh, got hooked. You know, Doug preached the truth. I, I wasn't so sure, so I, uh, I got my Bible out and checked everything he said. You couldn't deny anything he had to say. I always thought the Sabbath was done away with, like most churches preach with, preach about, so... But the way Doug presented it, you know, there was no doubt. 
So we actually became Adventists before we became Adventist. That year we, uh, we started keeping the Sabbath as good as I knew how. We started paying tithes. I always thought tithes was uh, some way for the church to rob you. I didn't actually know that God uh, <laughs> instituted that. So, uh, hey, you know, we, we, didn't, we hadn't come to church yet. We, we didn't have a place to pay tithes. So I sent my tithes to 3ABN. And uh, I was never a cheerful giver before in my life, but I was happy to do that. So anyway, we came to church. We became members here. We uh, became friends with, uh, you know, most of the older people that are out here. And, you know, that was 25 years ago. And uh, I've still got good friends in this church today. And one of them's good right here, Jim Morgan. He's, he, and there's Virgil back there, and there's Bud and Alice. And I can't go through and name all of you because I can't see you for one reason. <laughs> so... But, uh, you know, life is good, you know, and uh, so uh, we, we sold, I farmed, I'm a farm boy, I could probably mention that. We moved to Sandpoint, Idaho, and uh, I have two, two kids, a boy and a girl. My, uh, my daughter met a guy and moved to Colorado. And uh, he ended up killing her. And, uh, you know, I first thought that it was probably an accident, and then we found out that it was, uh, he'd planned it for months. And uh, I'll tell you what, I know I'm not the only one that's gone through the fire here. But I'm pretty sure that most of you will agree that has. It's probably the roughest, toughest thing you're ever going to go through in your life. I have aggressive prostate cancer right now. It's uh, spread beyond my prostate. It's a 9 out of 10 on aggressiveness, so pretty bad. But I'm telling you, it's all right. After what I've gone through, hey, that's nothing. And God's given me a peace. He gave me a peace when my daughter passed away. He's given me a peace now. And that's through earnestly praying for the Holy Spirit. When, uh, when Jim found out what had happened, he called me that night. He called me every night for, boy, a year and a half, two years. We talked every night. Jim's a busy guy. He runs a business. We sometimes talk till, hey, I don't know, 1 o'clock, midnight at least. And, you know, he never said I, well, almost never said I needed to get to bed. <laughs> and when he did say that, we talked for another hour anyway, so... You know, Jim, the Lord put Jim in my life way back when we first joined the church. And it was a, I'm not a social guy. I, I, I usually don't go looking for friends. I don't talk to a lot of people. I don't stay in contact with my friends, as a lot of you know. How many times do I ever call you? I don't, you know, I don't call people. But I do call Jim with my problems, so. And, uh, you know, it, he, he really helped me get through this. I, you know, I can't point to any one thing, but he was a big help. Praying for the Holy Spirit was probably the thing. But Jim's the one that got me on to that. He, he, uh, he found this book, and he sent it to me. It Steps to Revival. Maybe some of you have that. Maybe some of you have read already read it. If you haven't, I highly suggest that you would get this book and read it. And as good as this book is, I think there's a better one. And it's the Baptism of the Holy Spirit. And these are available at the ABC store. And uh, 
I, I can't recommend. I can only recommend this book. Who are the um, This is a German guy, Helmut uh, Hebril. Hebril. And it's, a, it's, you know, he's a German guy. It's a little hard to read, but it's, it's still a really good book. This one's a Dennis Smith book. And, uh, you know, he's, he's written a lot of books. And uh, this, is, this is good. Abiding in Christ is another good one. So I'm basically here to tell you, I mean, I, I didn't give much testimony, but you know where I'm coming from. I mean, I, I've been low. And, but praying with Jim... You know, at first I couldn't even pray. Jim had to do the praying for us. It took a while before I could, I could join in. But I did pray on my own when I was by myself that uh, first our daughter was just missing and I prayed that she'd be found and she'd be safe, that God would keep her safe. And then after we realized that uh, she was probably dead, I prayed for a resurrection. And, uh, but I, I couldn't and pray with anybody else. So Jim had to do our praying for us. So re- reading through this book and earnestly praying for the Holy Spirit, God gave me peace that passes understanding. I mean, you can imagine the hurt. Well, some of you don't have to imagine know the hurt I was going through. Um, I stayed home. My wife and my son went down to try to find out what had happened. And uh, finally, my wife called and says, you know, I needed to come down. So I came down. And about a day after I got there, I, Jim always called me. I, I called him that day because the Holy Spirit had given me that peace that day. And I just... I had such joy and peace in my heart that I had to share it. But you got to be careful what you pray for. The Holy Spirit came on and gave me such peace that I could not handle it because I felt guilty that I wasn't feeling really bad because he took all the hurt away from me at that time. So God had to take the Holy Spirit back a little bit so I could, I could feel my grief and uh, thankfully, I've been filled again by the Holy Spirit. And he's, he's given me that peace again. And one of the things that uh, I was thinking about, you know, but trying to find a sermon title for this, and I thought, you know, joy. How many of us feel real joy and contentment? And if you don't, you can. It's there because I have it. I'm proof. I've came all the way from wanting to drink myself to death. And Jim can attest to that because he was there with me when I told him I, I didn't want to live any longer. Well, after, you know, after, well, I did pretty good. What, what was my following point is I, I assumed my daughter died instantly. So I thought, you know, that's good. You know, God is merciful. She's going to wake up in the resurrection and think, wow, what am I doing here? I was sitting at the table. And when I found out that wasn't the case, my, uh, I thought, how, how could God be loving and merciful if he allowed her to suffer through her death? And I lost it. And I just, everything, the Holy Spirit in my life, the the answered prayers, the answered instant prayers even, all, all, all the leading just kind of out the window, you know. It's God is not loving. And uh, I found that out. The detective told me that at, a, at one of the hearings there. And I drove home that night from Colorado. And Jim had to babysit me on the phone, you know, through most of Wyoming. And, and yeah, he, he wanted to talk all night. And I told him, hey, you need to get some sleep, you know, so... So, uh, but I think he called me again in the middle of the night to make sure I was all right. And God kept me going. And I struggled with that, but, uh, you know, God had given me, you know, God gave me Jim way back. 
God gave me a scripture way back. And that would be uh, Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That verse came to mind when I was thinking God is not a loving God because that's the way I felt. That's what my heart said. But also God spoke to my mind and said, uh, what are you going to believe? You're going to believe your feelings, your heart that is deceitful? Or are you going to believe all the things that uh, are in my book, my word that I've been teaching you all these years? You know, the choice is yours. So uh, I made the choice to forget my feelings, my heart, what my heart told me, and to go with what I knew in my head. And I think that was the right choice. I know that was the right choice. So uh, I, I'm happy today because of the Holy Spirit. So I've got a, got a few verses here that I'd like to share with you. You know, one is uh, John 14, 16 and 17. Oh, I seem to have lost my marker here. There we go. I guess I just didn't find it. 16 and 17, which I can't seem to find. <laughs> Here we go. And I will ask the Father, this is Jesus talking, I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. You know, that's, uh, that's a promise Jesus gave before, right before he went to the cross. And I believe that because I experience it. And uh, another one is Luke 11, 11 and 12. I'm sure most of you know that. Jim uh, recited that to me quite often as we were going through it. He, he, had, he had to suffer along with me. He, he's been through it with me the whole time. So, uh, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And I'm going to hit you with a few more here. Oh, yeah. Luke uh, 11... Nine. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. You know that in the Bible it comes first, but I thought I liked it better and turned around. So, And the fruit of the Spirit, that's in Galatians. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. There's a reason love is first. But look what's the second, joy. Joy is pretty important in our lives. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such thing there is no law. I pray for those fruit by name every morning and every night 
and God will put those in me. And last year, I, you know, I, God did take the knife out of my heart finally. It just left me with a deep sorrow, but the pain was gone. That was pretty good, but, you know, I still felt pretty crummy. And I, I, last year I, I said, God, you know, I am, I'm tired of feeling bad. You know, I, I want your joy. And, boy, it wasn't very long I had it. I was, I was better off, more happy than I'd ever been in my life before. And when I got my cancer diagnosis, I was giving me pretty good peace with that. But I did six weeks of radiation, and by the end of that, I was, I didn't know if which was worse, the cancer or the cure. I'm almost thinking the cure was worse, but uh, so I've been kind of beat down this year. But hey, I still have the joy of the Holy Spirit within me. And that's available to everybody that's here. So if you don't have enough joy in your life, enough happiness, enough peace, enough love, pray for it. Because if you earnestly pray for it, Jesus is going to give it to you. And I just read the promises where he said he would. And I believe every word in this book. It's, I, I've lived it. I, I've been through it. I've experienced it. And Jim can attest to that. I'm, I'm glad, you know, I've, I've got my friends here, you know, and, and uh, they, they pretty much knew how bad it was and that, uh, hey, I'm through it. I'm a happy guy today. And I'm not the guy to be up here preaching. This is really not my thing. I used to sit behind the camera back there when there was actual real cameras that you ran and did the filming and uh, that's how I got to know Lyle Albrecht. We filmed him a couple times and, and I, I'd be, I'm a lot more comfortable back there than I am up here but I feel the Lord is impressing me to spread his word, to do his work and I desperately want to go home. I am tired of this sinful world and when people say it was such a beautiful world, hey, parts of it are. But look around. Look at the sin that is in this world. Look at what happens to a countless number of children that are abducted. Look at the abortion issue. I mean, just look around. This world is not a place full of happiness other than what the Lord gives you. Let's go home where happiness abounds but we can have that in this life through Jesus he said I've come to bring you life and more abundantly and I, I'm, I'm a testament that I, I'm living that life more abundantly right now I have a beautiful granddaughter that's a blessing she enjoyed my life and I just wish I could keep up with her everybody says oh she'll keep you young no she just lets me see how old I am <laughs> But, uh, boy, I thought I had a lot more to say. I think the Lord just cut it to the quick, give you the information that is important. But, hey, here I am. I'm, done, I'm the living testimony of what God can do for you. And if you don't take my word for it, ask that man right there. He'll tell you where I've been, where I've come from, where I'm at today. So, praise God. And I love this church. I want to thank all you people that have prayed for me, that are still praying for me. I love you. Shall we close with a prayer here? Father in heaven, you are so loving, so gracious and merciful that we cannot even understand it all. But we can accept it. If we have self get out of our way, deny self, you know, surrender. If people like me, I didn't know how to surrender. So I ask you to take the bad stuff away from me, my selfishness, my worldliness. 
Give me my worldly desires. Give me the desires of your heart, the desires that you want me to have. You've done that for me. I thank you for that. I thank you for where you've brought me and that I've got to know that you are a really loving God and I'm grateful that I get to know you better each day. I ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to fill each and every one that is here today that uh, they can also enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if anybody out there wants to talk, you have any burdens that are on your heart, if I can help you, if I can do anything to help you, I'm here. I'll talk to you. I'll give you what information I can. I'll, I'll do whatever I can for you.